Welcome to The Secret Place with Steph Abane. Devotions for hungry hearts and searching souls. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Secret Place with Stepha. I'm here today. I told you she'd be back. I'm here with Hannah. Hannah Dedman Arnst is a good friend of mine, a former student, beautiful woman who is just, I cherish and I love what God is doing in her and through her life and, and who she is. And, uh, I've got her back for today. Today we are going to talk about a little passage from one of my favorite books called Walking on Water by Madeline Lingle, Reflections on Faith and Art. So good. I love this book. I use it every time I can for my, I'm using it this semester. Um, and Madeline Lingle, in, in case you didn't know, was the writer of A Wrinkle in Time. And I think she probably would uh, just roll over, roll over in her grave if she saw the movie. <laughs> oh, yes. So just read the, the book. book. Right. Just read the right. book. Right. right. I mean, there were things I liked about the yes. movie, but it was way different than the book, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, agreed. Well, this one, this little passage I'm going to read here, you know, she talks all about faith and art and uh, music and literature and what it, and Imago Day. This little passage is about, well, you'll see. You'll see. It's about <laughs> God's love, and then we'll talk about it. Sounds good. We are hurt. We are lonely. And we turn to music or words, and as, comparison, uh, as compensation beyond all price, we are given glimpses of the world on the other side of time and space. We all have glimpses of glory as children, and as we grow up, we forget them or are taught to think we made them up. They couldn't possibly have been real because to most of us who are grown up, reality is like radium and can be born only in very small quantities. But we are meant to be real and to see and to recognize the real. We are all more than we know. And that wondrous reality, that, that wholeness, holiness is there for all of us, not the qualified only. I am glad that in the communion of my church, we are baptized as infants because this emphasizes that the gift of death to this world and birth into the kingdom of God is in fact, if it is nothing, it is, it is nothing we have earned or even as infants chosen, it is God's freely bestowed love. Uh, you know, everyone, everyone worships differently, and all different um, traditions have di various interpretations of the Bible and, and, w and who Jesus is sometimes and what it means in our life. But I love, you know, I don't worship in the same way that Madeline Lingle did with her communion, but I love her perspective. I love how she um, she doesn't separate into like the arts and the creative flow and then the sacred, the, right. the holy, the spiritual, the, the religious. Yes. I like I like the way she thinks about that. And I was thinking as as it's growing closer to the Christmas season, uh, you know, do you ever do this? I always find one bulb or Christmas ball or something bit of de decoration like months after we put everything away. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> and I thought I got everything last year. But no, this little Santa, this little Santa that belongs on the tree, my friend Debbie gave it to me because it's like Santa is coming in a little trailer and she's got a dream, we've got a dream to one day see see the land this yes. way, you know. But anyway, you know, you think about what Christmas meant to us maybe as children and for so many of us, um, the incarnation, the beautiful coming of the Lord Jesus um, was something that we moved into as we grew up because as children it was very much about um, the joy of gifts and things like that. Tell us, um, a, tell our audience and me yes. a little bit about what the incarnation means to you and maybe a little bit about what your Christmases were like as a youngster. Yeah, so uh, I think I'll start with that because it kind of, kind of goes into um, how I'm seeing Christmas now but you know we I grew up in a wonderful home. I, you know, had a great childhood. Um, I, I'm from Chicago, so I had white Christmases almost every year. There were a couple that were uh, spared of, of the blanket of snow, but um, it was wonderful waking up on Christmas morning after having done uh, Christmas Eve dinner and going to church and um, thinking about, you know, the, the true meaning behind Christmas. But of course, when you're a little one, you, you, you are excited for those gifts. Sure. Um, but of course, we, we, we link that back as we get older and we, we go, you know, Christmas did give us a gift. And that was the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. And 
growing up and growing older and um, having accepted Jesus, you know, as my Lord and Savior, I think that anticipation of Christmas mm -hmm. and of that time, um, you know, now living in Florida, I think I decorate a little bit earlier just so I can start to anticipate right. that feeling. But it's about how Jesus came as man, as fully God as well, and came to our earth to live amongst us and show us why he was really here. Yeah. You know, he was here for uh, eternity. Yeah. It wasn't for the earthly politics that everyone thought That's he right. was here for. It was for something bigger, something eternal that we could all grasp, no matter you know, if we were royalty or if we were the lowest of the low. And I think that's, that's right. what's really cool about um, Jesus and, and just about everything that he is, is going against the grain in the most beautiful and pure way of saying, mm -hmm. I'm here for you. Here's my hand mm -hmm. and I'm ready for you when you're ready for me. Mm -hmm. So just that um, anticipation of, of mm -hmm. him and uh, the promise mm -hmm. that was fulfilled. Uh, mm -hmm. It just, oh, I get chills thinking mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. because it's just so um, cool and important to me. You know, I think Easter is, is just as important, but um, to be completely honest, Christmas is my favorite because it is that that promise fulfilled. That's right. That's, right. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, Hannah. Yeah, I think of so many Christmases past, too, when I was a young mother. Mm -hmm. um, I was a mom by the time I was your age. And um, I was so, um, my personality was a little bit different. I, I've changed a lot. I was very much black and white about um, what Christmas should be and what it shouldn't and what the kids could have and what they couldn't um, because I so much wanted them to get the true gift of Christmas, yeah. right? Then as I got a little older, I started like loosening up a little bit um, and uh, I just was very careful not wanting it to be commercialized and the, the message of the incarnation of Jesus coming to us the way you said so beautifully. Yeah. I didn't want that to get lost. Absolutely. But but just as you said, I learned that Jesus comes to us, Emmanuel, as we come to him when we are ready. Yes. You know? Yeah. And and we as parents, as uh, myself as a parent, and any young parents who are listening, you know, we do our best. Do the best you can. But you know, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the Savior. I'm not God. You're not God. We're, we have to know that everyone has their path. Everyone has the steps they take to, you know, to receive the Savior, receive yeah. His coming. Yes. Right? Receive Absolutely. His coming into the world. And I guess as, as we're getting ready for this Christmas season, one of the things that always occurs to me is, you know, how many people are sad at Christmas. We're joyful yeah. Christmas. We get up the decorations. We have a lot of things to be thankful for. Sure. And yet, it's supposedly, uh, the stats at least say that mm -hmm. it's one of the saddest times of year for many people. Many people commit suicide. Many people just yeah. are, isolate themselves. And I, I, I find that so grievous to me. What I really want people to know, like if I could tell the whole world, if I had more than 37 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> I would tell the world, you know, don't hang your whole life on a holiday, on Christmas, like because it's not the Christmas you envisioned or because the one you had as a child or the one you hoped for. It's a day. It's an important yeah. memorial. It's an yeah. important commemoration of the incarnation. Yeah. But God is with us every day through Jesus. Amen. And he's there yeah. to lay hold of him and to say, I'm here. Are you here? Help me. Come to me. I come to you. Yes. You know? So, yeah. you know, I... If you're, if you're a person who doesn't have a lot of people around you this season and you're starting to feel those lonely pangs when you see the decorations and the, and the little you know, Christmas balls and, and, and whatnot, you know, get some people around you. Step out. Yeah, I mean, I don't usually tell people, get busy, you know. Mm. Yeah. I usually tell people get quiet, be you know, get slower. Like let's take, let's slow down the pace. But find people. Get to know some people. Befriend people. Be the friend to someone that you want. Um, and uh, that's not going to fix everything, but that's a step, right? Absolutely. And what kinds of things might you recommend to people who are looking to have the kind of joy that we have yeah. in Christmas and the kind that you uh, expressed 
some things they can do? Yeah, I mean, it's true. Uh, Christmas can be a time of hurt. Maybe there there are bad memories or, you know, a family member isn't with you this year and they were last year. Um, I think what uh, Stefa has said is rally together. Um, and if you, if you don't want to do that, um, whoever you may be out there, I would encourage you to reach out to those people in your life that you think, you know, they just might need a word of encouragement. Yeah. They just yeah. might need to go out for a cup of coffee or mm -hmm. a, a quick hug. Um, again, a word. Um, reach out and, and just be there. I think we, we do have such busy lives, yeah. not just during Christmas time, but, but throughout the year that we become isolated and we have this idea that we are not because of social media, because right. of emails, because of text messages, but truly it can be difficult to connect one-on-one, -on -one, face to face yeah. with people. So I would encourage you to just take that step. Even just wave to someone, yeah. uh, it, you know, in, in school or talk yeah. to someone in class. Say hello. Just say hello. <laughs> you know, get together. Um, I, I know it can be difficult, especially you know we're a little bit more extroverted. Yeah. But um, for those that that maybe are a little bit more into being alone, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but just take the time, take the time to be still and, and receive what you feel God uh, putting on your heart to, uh, to reach out or to reflect. Mm -hmm. uh, again, not just during Christmas, but, right. but anytime. That's right. Yeah. Every day. There's hope. There's hope in Christmas. And uh, we just want to encourage you today from the secret place to, to lay hold of that hope, to know that there's hope and to follow that hope, follow the hope that is in the Lord. Breathe, listen, and receive. Take a moment to soak it all in. Until next time. <laughs>